Welcome to a quick overview of what we learned on the developer AMA for Cepheus Protocol on the 28th of August. And let me tell you, we learned a lot and it was freaking awesome. Now, the full AMA uh, stream is available on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description if you want to watch the full thing. I highly recommend that you do because there is so much information and I am certainly not going to get all of it into this quick overview because there's just too much. But I thought we should take a quick look at the roadmap because that is quite interesting to, to know when is what coming and what is coming. So if you find the information in this video useful, then I would appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. It helps me out a lot and I would really appreciate it. So let's take a look at the roadmap. Everything you see on the screen here, the developers aim to have done by the end of the year. So, and that's a lot of stuff. That is a lot of stuff that they aim to have done by the end of the year. I am quite amazed at their uh, ambition, you might say. It's a very ambitious project and I freaking love it. It's a fantastic game already. And there's so much more coming. So let's have a look at what is coming and when. So in September, in the first half of September, uh, maybe mid-September, we'll be getting uh, the first part of vehicles, which we have here, vehicles and doctrines. We have, uh, we will be getting the first part of vehicles um, early to mid-September. And uh, what they'll be adding is some helicopters and some more ground vehicles. So there'll be several different kinds of uh, helicopters coming in and also uh, ground vehicles. So that is pretty damn cool. Then they will also be adding uh, the giant worm, which we have down here. Uh, the giant worm will be coming early to mid-September. And the worm spawns uh, smaller creatures that will suck blood from your soldiers and, and feed to the worm as a buff for the worm. So that seems pretty damn nifty. And... Uh, yeah, so they can overwhelm your uh, your soldiers when they come in large numbers. And the longer the worm is alive, the more of these uh, small nasties it'll spawn. So it's probably good to get that killed as soon as you can. Next, we have Doctrines. We're back up here now. And Doctrines seems really, really interesting. So the doctrines will allow you to spec into uh, specialized types of commands. So you could do a motorized command, for instance. And uh, gathering DNA will give you tech points to unlock uh, stuff in these doctrines, which seems really cool, and also gives you another uh, thing to use the DNA for, not just get the 150 DNA, now I can kill Chelsea Trader. No, you need it for uh, unlocking uh, text in the doctrines. That is fantastic. Additionally, uh, the doctrines will change the way you fight because uh, one doctrine may be focused on uh, troop transports, another will be focused on air power, stuff like that. So that could be uh, quite interesting and give it quite a lot of uh, replayability because you can try one way in one game and another way in another game. So this will uh, definitely impact uh, the re replayability of the game and how you go about uh, tackling the dangers of uh, uh, of the world. So, uh, so the, 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 there will be different types of vehicles for the for each doctrine, and another thing that they will be introducing is co-op. And for the doctrines, uh, each player can choose their own doctrine. So if you are up, the, the co-op is up to four players. So I'll get back to that a little bit later. But uh, each player can choose their own doctrine. So you can complement each other. So one can choose the troop transport. One can uh, choose the air power, stuff like that, uh, so that you can complement each other and uh, support each other with your different uh, specialities. That seems really cool for a co-op play. All right, let's move on to factions, which are also uh, coming out uh, 
possibly in late September, maybe early October. And there will be three factions, as we already know, uh, ourselves, Cirque, well, four factions, really, ourselves, Cirque, then there'll be Chelsea Trader, the enemy faction, the infected, and then there will be uh, civilians uh, who are anarchists and their goal will be be to survive at any cost uh, kill anyone you need take what you want what you need to just stay alive and then there's the police who are kind of trapped in the city and not really getting help from from outside and their goal is to to round up civilians maybe and uh, try and get out of the city with as many people as possible and uh, each of the factions will have their own unique soldier classes as well, so that seems uh, pretty interesting. They'll give you some different types of enemies. And the factions will also... So if you're being nice to the police, uh, doing things the way they like it being done, then probably the civilians won't not like you that much, and uh, vice versa. So you might have to choose which uh, of the... You might say quote unquote human factions, you not infected factions, I guess is the right way to say it, you want to uh, team up with, if any. Then in October, there's actually a Cepheus Protocol novel coming out, which I think is pretty cool. And it's coming out on the 1st uh, of October on the Steam store. So if you're interesting, interested to, to read the novel, learn a lot about the backstory, then definitely go get that. It should be pretty interesting. I think I will definitely be getting. Uh, then there will be a lot of stuff uh, about uh, maps. So there will be three new maps introduced. There will be a world map. Uh, and there will be three new maps introduced. So we'll have a, f a total of four maps in uh, pandemic mode. So right now we have Treasure Island. Then we'll have the Presidio, which will have a lot of variety in the terrain and stuff like that. We'll have Angel Island, which will feature a large Navy base and some open areas. And then there'll be downtown San Francisco, which is uh, kind of, you know, close quarters, uh, combat war zone, uh, probably my guess is probably the the hardest of the of the maps to fight on because it it'll be uh, so congested with buildings and stuff now what's really cool is all of the maps will be available in the same game so you will be able to move between the maps in the game so you can maybe secure treasure island your starting island and then move on to the presidio and start taking that uh, so you can fast travel between the maps and the maps are actively, or they're, they're simulated in real time as you play along. So if you move away from Treasure Island, let's say you move to the Presidio, then the map, the Treasure Island map can actually be reinvaded by the infected or one of the other factions, and they can start taking over the Treasure Island map again. So you really need to fortify your positions on one map before you decide to move on to another. And in co-op mode, you'll be able to move uh, to different maps uh, separately of each other. So maybe if you're four players, two of you will stay and take over Treasure Island, and two of you will move straight to the Presidio and, and try and take that over, and you can mix and match that way. So that seems really, really cool. And every map kind of needs a different approach, according to the developers. I know I'm not entirely sure how, but every map, map will kind of need a, a different approach on how to take over, how to, to win that map, you might say. Additionally, uh, the Horde map is being overhauled. It will be two and a half times larger than it is now, and it will introduce some side missions where you have to go rescue civilians uh, to get a cash bonus and stuff like that. So uh, while the horde is attacking your positions, you have to actually go out of, uh, of your little bubble, uh, your safe zone, you might say, where you have all your defenses set up, and you have to go out and grab these civilians and bring them back to base and get them out of there. So that seems uh, pretty cool. And the side missions will, uh, as I understood it, be a little bit random so it'll not be the same every time you play through the horde horde map so it'll make it more uh, replayable and it'll also make it um, harder 
So that seems pretty darn cool. So that was in October. Uh, I'm not sure that the horde map will be coming uh, in October or when it'll be coming, but I thought I would throw it in together with the, with the other world maps. But the world map will be coming uh, in October with the three new maps for the pandemic mode, the Presidio, Angel Island, and downtown San Francisco. Then we have November. November, we'll see co-op being introduced. We have co-op here. We'll look at, at world map before. Then we'll take a look at co-op, which will be coming in November. So as I said, uh, it'll be up to four players that can play co-op. And each player can choose their own doctrines, uh, so you can complement each other. The players share the same money and building, so it's not like, uh, hey, you took that from me, so now I can't earn money from that or anything, so you share it all. So, But that also means that uh, you can't just hog everything uh, and just spend all the money because then your uh, co-op players won't have any anything to, to spend uh, or any way to improve themselves. So you really need to, uh, to think about that in, in a co-op play. Then in December, modding support will come out. And modding support will allow you to make your own campaigns, uh, you can remodel weapons, maybe introduce new weapons. You can you know, basically it'll be modding to the same extent as XCOM 2, if you're familiar with uh, how much modding there is on XCOM 2. There are a ton of mods and they really, really change the game a lot. So that's going to be pretty exciting. And also, of course, the modding will ch introduce so much uh, replayability of Cepheus Protocol. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, mods will be on mod.io, not on the Steam Workshop. And they will be building a mod launcher as well. So it'll be nice and easy to get mods and uh, install them and play with them. So I, I think that's a very exciting uh, point coming up in December there. So there may be adjustments to the roadmap. And there may be a little bit of bleed over, uh, as they said. But the goal is to have everything on here done by the end of the year. So one thing we haven't touched on is AI improvements. And I, I'm guessing that's because th there wasn't really a, a timeline for it. But so I, I, I would guess that it's because it'll happen a little bit over time, over time. So there are like uh, spitters that'll be pack hunters searching for enemies. Um, they will try to pull you into ambushes, stuff like that. And that seems uh, like a big challenge that uh, they'll try and like make sounds or something, pull you over here, and then there's just a horde of them that'll try to take you out. That's, that seems uh, like it could be a challenging uh, thing to face. Now, on a more not uh, month by month, uh, view as well. There will be new enemy types. There'll be some kind of anti-air um, infected and an artillery infected. Uh, also, there'll be coming uh, kill statistics uh, for the game. Uh, there'll be mini events that you can uh, choose to, to take part of or not. Uh, these are mini events, events in the game. It's not like global events where players take part in it together. It's mini events in the game where maybe a civilian runs over and says, hey, can you help me or something like that? And then you can choose to do so or not. And this uh, civilian could potentially be an anarchist who wants to pull you into an ambush or something like that. Or it could just be a civilian who needs help. Who knows? Uh, you'll also be able to put soldiers on top of buildings and repel them down. So maybe put snipers up on top of some of the higher buildings uh, to help provide cover. Uh, you'll be able to mow down infected with with, uh, with your cars. So they're, they're working on some ragdoll effects for the animations. Uh, there'll be helicopters that you can repel out of to deploy your soldiers. It, it's all really, really cool. It's all really, really cool. And there actually has been an update already on the 28th of August, uh, a little bit after the, um, the AMA, I think. They released an update uh, tweaking the infected's behavior a bit. So that's 
it's going to be exciting to see how that affects our next uh, playthrough as well. So yeah, a lot of stuff. And I have not covered everything, not by a long shot. So I highly encourage you to head over to the the video of the live stream, uh, the AMA and showcase, and, and take in the full video. It's about one and a half hour, but it's well worth your time, in my opinion. And uh, as I said, there'll be a link in the description. So that is this for this quick, uh, what did we learn uh, at the AMA? So thank you very much for watching. If you found the information, information useful, I'd really appreciate a quick tap on the like button. And if you're new to the channel, why not hit the subscribe and notification bell as well so that you get notified when new videos comes out. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.